we're going to start what I call our detail study. And our detail study is going to start with actually one of our ideas that I mentioned to you before that can actually fill up many different styles of questions. So I put one of those stars beside this here. It's something called energy carriers. Okay, energy carriers. Now on the course, you actually only need to know two, no matter what it says in the books. And some of the books make this out to be way harder than it is. They completely section off a higher level section and put a line there and say only for higher level. And then just decide to make this into college, if not even postgraduate standard science. I don't know why. Very simple. What we need to know is we need to know about ATP and we need to know about NADPH. So ATP and NADPH. Okay, what are they? First of all, ATP and NADPH are what, are what is known as high energy molecules. They have loads of energy in them, high energy molecules. Okay, what do you mean loads of energy? ATP literally is the energy source. What you make in your body to like move, to think, anytime your body uses energy, it's inside ATP. And I'll explain that more in a minute. NADPH is what the plant uses to carry protons and electrons. So this here is genuinely just carrying energy, and this here is genuinely carrying protons and electrons. Okay, now, ATP looks a little bit like this in terms of our diagram. Does it really look like this? No, obviously, but like what it has is it has an adenine, adenosine molecule here, Grant, so I'm just gonna put A here, there's for A, and then it's got two phosphates joined onto that. One, two. David, that's two is di, that's adenosine, aden sorry, that's adenine diphosphate, not triphosphate, yeah. Because we actually also have to know a low energy molecule for this as well, the low energy version for each of these. So what happens is when ATP uses up its energy, so say for example, I've used some up by just putting this marker across the board here, it becomes ADP. It becomes ADP, adenine diphosphate. Adenosine, sorry, I keep pronouncing it wrong. You can see it on the page there, adenosine, adenosine diphosphate is what, is what it becomes. Okay, so that is adenosine diphosphate, the low energy molecule, and the energy just goes away. Yeah, but how? Well, it's easier for me to show you how it becomes ATP. If we have ADP here, and we want it to become ATP, what actually happens is your body traps some energy, which might have come from food or whatever it comes from, and depending on the, on the situation, but it can't just get trapped by something, it actually gets trapped by another phosphate, by another phosphate, completely trapped there. So now you've got a storage of ATP in your body, adenosine triphosphate, and loads of energy. If you want to use it, what actually happens is this just breaks off. This just completely breaks off here. The energy is gone and used for whatever muscle contraction or anything you need. Phosphate goes floating about away. And now we were down to the low energy molecule, which is ADP. But that can just be reversed again and again and again. And in fact, as you'll see in a few minutes, these things are recycled. This thing is almost like a bus. This ADP is almost like a bus and its passenger is energy. It brings it to a place, drops it off, and then goes back and gets another passenger and goes again and again and again. Same with this NADPH. Now, it's written down there in the page for you. I can't pronounce it. I can't write, I can't pronounce what that says there. But like, do we need to know it? No. There was one time they asked you what NAD stood for. And it was considered like a not fair question because if people can't even pronounce it, like how are they gonna remember it? If you're like, I need 100% David, maybe learn that stuff there on the page. But I, I'd be, genuinely I'd be willing to bet everything that I own. <laughs> but yeah, so maybe not, maybe not this t-shirt, but most other t-shirts. Okay, so I would suggest you don't actually need to learn. NADPH is fine. But David, is there not like NA, I forget, I get confused when it's NADPH and NADH. P for photosynthesis, unbelievable. So anytime it has P, that's photosynthesis. If it doesn't have a P, it's not photosynthesis. When you talk about it by itself or in respiration, no P, that's fine. Everything else the same. 
That's the high energy molecule. The low energy molecule is NAD, as you can see then in your notes there, NADP+. Plus. So the plus is always still there, but again, the P for photosynthesis. Now, why have I gone and done it in blue there? I don't know. I wish I did it in black. It really, really annoys me, but it gives me another opportunity to tell you again. NADPH carries protons and electrons. That's the high energy molecule. It's going to drop off those protons and electrons wherever they need to go. And then it's going to become like an empty bus, which again, in photosynthesis is NADP+. If this is not photosynthesis, just drop the P's. Everything else is the same. Now, you do not need to know any, any sort of weird diagrams or anything on that. Uh, I know I've, I've um, got some charged battery and stuff idea there for you. I know I said phosphorylation. You don't need to know that. That's just there to explain stuff to you. So that's fine. Cool. So that's our energy carriers, and that's all we need to know them. Literally nothing else. So I'm fairly happy with that. And I'm going to tell you that this can come up in photosynthesis, this can come up in respiration, or it can be just a question by itself. So I just wrote P or Q just to remind you of that. So I'm not going to go over this again when we do respiration because it's the exact same thing. The only difference is if, if it's not photosynthesis, drop the P. Fine. If we have a look here at the light stage, okay, so the light stage of photosynthesis in our detailed study, we know in photosynthesis, or you probably know if you've done this before, there are two stages. There's the light stage and then there's the dark stage. The dark stage is also called the light independent stage. So the, light, the dark stage is also called the light independent stage. Why? Not because it doesn't need, like, dark, or not because it needs dark, but because like, it just also doesn't need light. Okay, sorry, let me explain that properly. The light stage needs light. The dark stage doesn't need dark. It just doesn't need light. So it's also known as the light independent stage. It can happen at any time. This 100% needs light. You can see here in your notes that the light stage occurs in what's known as the grana of the chloroplast. But if they ask you where it occurs, you could just say chloroplast. We've got, to, we've got it, it broken down into three separate steps here for the light stage. Step one, it just says light is absorbed. Okay, so for step one, I'm just talking about chlorophyll and photolysis. It's the exact same stuff as over there, so we're not going to repeat it. So I'm just going to say uh, light absorbed, and then we've got the chlorophyll and the photolysis. So chlorophyll and photolysis, which we spoke about, it's the exact same. Step two is the part that students get very upset about, the pathways. I'm going to spend a minute now just making you feel way better about these. Remember in these questions, maximum you need are three key points. Maximum. For these pathways, you could probably come up with, if you were a really good biologist, a hundred key points. Okay, you probably could. Many of that stuff not, not on the course, and most of that stuff not necessary. There are two pathways, pathway one and two. Okay, so let me just show you that. Pathway one and pathway two. One of them is what's known as cyclic, because it goes around in a circle, so we've got cyclic. One of them is non-cyclic. Perfect. Grand. There's two, there's two key points, by the way. Just, just saying. I won't, I won't keep saying that in there. What happens? Well, those electrons that got energized, and when I kept saying nope, when it was creepy enough there, those electrons that got energized, you can say two and all that if you want, but they are energized. They bounce around electron acceptor to electron acceptor to electron acceptor, or some of you guys might have learned that, that this way, that they bounce through the electron transport system or the electron transport chain. That's all fine, okay? But they bounce around these different areas, and as they jump around these different areas, they lose energy. The same way if you were just in your, in your sitting room right now, or in your kitchen, you started jumping on chairs and the table and the counter, jumping around, you would lose energy. You would start giving off loads of heat you have loads of energy just let it go now as they lose energy that energy that they lose is trapped by our friend ADP and it joins with another phosphate to form ATP exactly like we had over here so that ADP traps the energy with another phosphate in there and forms ATP 
Now this arrow, because it's cyclic, keeps going back in a circle back to the chlorophyll at the very, very start. And the same thing happens again and again and again. Okay, that's all you need to know. Do you need to know the diagram on the right? No, but it's the simplest one that I, that I could find that is the same as what I have up here. Okay, so cyclic, electrons get energy from sunlight or from the process of photolysis. They bounce around electron acceptor to electron acceptor to electron acceptor. They, they, in the process, they lose energy. That energy is trapped by ADP. That energy forms ATP. They return to the chlorophyll. So that's probably like seven key points. Okay, so that's fine. The non-cyclic is actually the exact same. As in, we've got these energized electrons. Do you need to know how many or what? Nah. So those energized electrons bounce around electron acceptor to electron acceptor to electron acceptor. Grand. They lose energy. Grand. That energy is trapped by ADP. Great. It produces ATP. Great. The only difference, the only difference here is that instead of returning to the chlorophyll, these electrons, these electrons here, now bind with this NADP plus, okay, so they bind with NADP plus, this marker is doing my head in so hold on, NADP plus, and the proton from photolysis, and the proton from photolysis, and they form NADPH, the high energy molecule we spoke about. Okay, think about this from over here. Those electrons, or this NADPH we said carries protons and electrons. So if you actually add these two to this, it gives you this thing here. So that's what's happening here. We've got our protons and the electrons adding with NADP plus and forming the high energy NADPH. Now, that gives us three products of the light stage, three products. Okay, we have ATP, so I'm gonna put them in red here. ATP, NADPH, and we also have oxygen. Oxygen. Where did the oxygen come from? Oh yeah, the photolysis. These top two things, they're gonna transfer over to the dark stage over here. Grant. The oxygen, as we know, goes into the atmosphere or kept for internal respiration. But that is the light stage. That is what you need to know. And if you know that, I guarantee you, you'll be able to answer any exam question apart from one. If they ask you about where photolysis occurs or where oxygen is split, just say pathway to non-cyclic. Why? Because I'm just telling you. Okay, so just, just please say that. Okay, pathway two. That's what I want you to say. In terms of the dark stage, what's the crack? Well, with that on page 77, there's not a hell of a lot we need to know. What I would like you to say is that you know that first of all, it's controlled by enzymes. The dark stage is controlled by enzymes. And I'd like you to write in beside that for our, our chapter in our, in our next, in our next um, session together, that enzymes are controlled by pH and temperature. Okay, so I'd like you to write that in. And then after that, you can see I have four steps with a line in between. Realistically, it all comes from, uh, from the first two, but if you need extra ideas, you, you can go ahead and use the extra two. Part one says, carbon dioxide diffuses into the stroma. Okay. Don't worry about diffusion yet. We don't know what it means. Don't worry about what the stomata or the stoma is. We don't know. CO2 absorbed is perfectly legitimate. Key point. Grand. Part two says, CO2 is reduced to blah, 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 blah. I shouldn't have put that much chemistry. I don't even know what reduced means. Like, so what I'm just going to say here is CO2 plus the protons plus the electrons gives us our famous, as we wrote down over there for our general overview, glucose. And that is going to be more than enough information if you word it correctly to get full marks in the dark stage. What we will do, though, is we'll just write the other two in just to let you know what they are or give you extra options. So it says NADPH returns to NADP plus. ATP returns to ADP plus P. What? They're all letters, David. 
high energy molecules go back to low energy molecules. If you want to describe them, you can. If you were short on key points, that's fine. And step four, step four, it says the products are recycled back. So we know that the low energy molecules of ADP and NADP plus, it says they are recycled back into the light stage and they're used again. Okay, that for me is all you need for photosynthesis to answer any question, any question whatsoever.